across a book that I think people will find useful. And uh, it's called Scale, the Universal Laws of Life, Growth, and Death in Organisms, Cities, and Companies. And the reason why I would say this is useful is because it gives you a better understanding of the math behind, um, you know, uh, growth and uh, decline, uh, which is what we do all the time in what? In asset, in trading. And, um, uh, you know, the, the laws and the, the way we uh, look at a chart from logarithmic to, um, to just a regular square scale, um, uh, X, Y axis um, is uh, it, it's um, it's all data, and data is uh, being able to find the tops and bottoms and the movement, and to get a good understanding and orchestration, I guess you can say, of this. Uh, this will be helpful for you. Um, now, another thing that I wanted to uh, discuss is this right here. Now. Remember this, that this is useful, but there's always a degree of randomness, the X factor in charts. And I don't care how exact everything sometimes seems to be, there's always that black swan or that anomalous behavior and event that can occur in any asset, uh, period. Uh, so you have to factor in randomness of things breaking down. And, um, you know, uh, right here, what you're looking at is the linear progression fit, which uh, like a plan B would use to some degree, or what you're going to see in the video of the people, uh, what is it, zero to a million, uh, the projections they give for the network effect. And for the most part, they're not incorrect. They just have, again, a very fixed ideology. And I always know that there's a degree of randomness in data and math and life. Uh, but the book does not make it any less useful because if you go with what happens most often, you're going to do better in life because you're going to be able to predict things that and, and have an understanding of them and to a greater ability than most people will. Now, this is a linear regression, a regression fit. Um, and it's got numbers that go from the upper boundary, if you see that on the top gray line, the midline, which is at, uh, the top gray is at 282 currently, the mid is at 71, and the bottom line is at 25K. So this fits within, you know, a lot of how uh, my projections go. A um, uh, little bit different because... Uh, I'm looking at other different types of data sets, but it still fits in, in general with what I'm looking for. And going out in a year and a half and, and on uh, to October of 25, I believe it is, uh, I would be looking for the 138 to 160s, and maybe we'll get up to the 290s or whatever it's at, the close to 300,000 mark. We can go crazy, or even the 200,000. There's plenty of uh, room, and if you look at the numbers, um, you can see breaks that occur above and below. Um, but they still kind of work within the network effect of Bitcoin, and I think it's very useful. And you'll see that in the video, because I'm going to go over and put it in the, um, the uh, caption box below, uh, the summary box, whatever they call that, uh, so you can uh, watch it and um, get an idea of projections other people use and the, the way they, they calculate them. And you don't have to be an astrophysicist to have an understanding of this, by the way. <laughs> anyway, on to the, the chart video, and um, I hope you enjoyed this, and I'll see you in the video. And here we are with Bitcoin once again. And, you know, um, I, I get asked... The question again, new people, I understand you want to get a, a good idea of what, how I trade and what I'm doing. So I'm basically going to go over this with you a little bit here. Um, right now, what I believe we are in is a fake out zone right here, fake out.
put it in the charts, and I've averaged into this box that you see right here. And my last cell for this range is capped right here at 44,300. Um, so that's my last average if we get up to this number up to here, which is like a 50-50, I would say. I think that this area right here will be our topping zone, this whole area right here from what's back in the chart. This is resistance. And this is where the last move down occurred too. Now, notice that before we had the plateauing effect right here, and then we had a fast drop off to this yellow line, which used to be a red line, uh, but we broke through it when we went from this area down here uh, up to here. Um, notice that this becomes a pivot now. So at the very least, I'm looking for us to get back to here and even ultimately continuation maybe down to here. Um, but how is that going to work out? Maybe it goes down here and it goes back up to here. And then there's, you know, there's so many different scenarios. <laughs> it's not even funny. But uh, after this occurs, uh, whether we get back up to here or we get back down to here and under down to here um, I don't care I'm playing the averages I'm playing what's likely to happen most often not what I want I'm trying to create the best balance for my trades and a lot of people uh, get confused and think uh, uh, for example I have uh, I'm looking for the mid 100,000 range um, uh, by summer to October of 2025 uh, and that could be anywhere from 138 all the way up to the 200,000 range um, that's possible I'm going to show you some data that supports that um, and uh, I'm going to give you some uh, uh, charting of logarithmic versus um, nonlinear versus linear I should say uh, basically, when we look at boxes, we think of a, it, it being squared in our heads, and we don't think about the powers, uh, uh, you know. Um, and this is the difference between linear and nonlinear thinking. It's the same thing that goes with price, uh, as well as time. And um, it's if you get into a fixed ideology of where you're thinking uh, that you have to have exacts. Uh, and price, uh, then you, you could be missing a bigger part of the picture. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a new book that I think would help you and uh, give you an idea of looking at things with a different tilted perspective. Same thing, data is data, it doesn't change, but the way you look at the data, you can look at it from a fixed point of view where you square it, or you can have it more as a free flowing point of view. Um, and uh, it, it's just a conceptual way of looking. So when I'm looking at charts, I'm seeing two different things. Uh, and um, that's why, the, and there's also a degree of randomness too. Nothing is always exact. Nothing, things rhyme, but they don't always do exactly what you would think or want them to do. Um, let's go over to this chart here. And you can see that we have a wave here and this is the main thing that I'm looking at you see this up here this is your 61.8 of the bigger range uh, when it went above this 48 700 area up here the spike that we had uh, with the ETF announcement I think it happened a few days later and it quickly pulls back uh, now it's under the 50%, now we're back over the 50% line. This is your 50%. And then your 30, uh, make sure I got these correct, yeah, your 50. And then your previous 38.2%, which is all the way down here. I'm looking for this range to complete. Uh, that's one of the scenarios that's most likely to happen. So I want to be a seller up here and a buyer down here and you might see we get a big pullback and go fall and, and keep going under the 38k area and just keep going down to here um, then you'll see me completely reverse to the buy side only 
and uh, there's a reason why um, because I know what I'm looking for going out in the future and I know what time block I'm looking for as well see we have until June to uh, to completely um, create this hold on one second let's do it daily you can see it better so June 10th to 12th we have this block right here we had this previous block which was from September all the way to January 8th to 10th and that's completed and that went way up now this one um, let's say that it reverses and goes way down so this is mostly selling within this block of course we can't predict that we'll see um, but it kind of fits within the the thinking right here first thing we want to see is this area up here retraces to this area down here uh, that's the main thing that's why you have this wave that you see right there uh, that's the the number one thing to be looking for and that's what I'm focused on now we are also near a resistance point in that 44 300 range you can see it all the way across here and uh, there are scenarios with the way the charts drawn that would uh, allow us to get up to here and then collapse back down uh, at the very least we're looking for the 40,500 number that's your pivot and I showed you that right over here this yellow line right there it's going to pull back at some point to this number it's just what happens the majority of the time with everything that's drawn now you also have a scenario where you can get a bigger move down to here based off of this type of pattern right here uh, but this does not have to complete we can break away from this just by completing the um, 61.8 to the 30 uh, 8.2 and retrace down to here so the statistics on this occurring are much higher than uh, the pattern target down here uh, but who knows uh, that's up to the charts we can get a fast move all the way down to here end of the world and then in a year's time be all the way up in the 138,000 zone <laughs> um, so you know there are all kinds of scenarios and all I'm doing is balancing them out best I can and uh, once they complete um, you know just keep on going keep on chugging along uh, but there's no exact there's no way for me to predict the future I'm just going with again remember what happens most often not what I want or what I think or feel or um, none of that matters what matters is that the ranges um, happen as they should and that's the key uh, anyway I'm gonna go talk to you about the uh, projections that you'll see in this video that I'm, I'm gonna give you a link to and also the the book uh, that they recommend because I think it would be useful for you to use and to basically get an understanding of how data uh, works and the power laws uh, that many charts uh, anything uh, that you can use how you can get a, a grip on it for projections going out in the future I think you'll find it interesting if nothing else so anyway I hope you found this video interesting oh I got also a question about SUI and here let's go to SUI here um, this was the last buy area that I had. This was nearly perfect to create this little wedge down here. Um, I have nothing to do with this from here until it retraces again. If it gets back down to these levels down here, I will definitely become a buyer again. But I'm just going to hold for the, the future on this. And I'm going to hold longer term. I don't, don't want to do anything with it. I want to see this up here to this up here that's my first target and then going out in the future maybe eight dollars this has fantastic volume this is going to become a very popular one in my opinion the volume is increasing and uh, yeah I, I like it 
Uh, I would love to see it get a pullback, uh, another pullback, like a fast down move, but uh, whatever. I'll just hold on to the, what I have, and if I get numbers all the way up to here, then fantastic. I don't have a ton of it, so. Um, but that's the one I like, and that will do it. Uh, I'll go over and do the book recommendation, and also, uh, because I was asked about books to possibly read, and I think this is a good one. Just from a mathematical perspective of powers and regression and logarithmic, a linear and nonlinear uh, way of looking at data, and uh, that's what charts are. You know, they're it's data, and uh, I think it would offer you a good uh, perspective, I should say, as well as I'll give you the video link of uh, the the people who um, created the video. Um, uh, which I found very interesting and, and matches up here. Let me go back into here. It matches up with the projections of Bitcoin going out into the future for my own. Um, here, numbers that go all the way up to here. And I think that's October of 25 and that we should be within this box, within this zone. And that's from, um, Actually, it even goes further back here. So where this cross, the green line crosses the red on a time basis, uh, this makes sense, and all the way up to here. So that's basically in the late summer, early fall of um, 2025. So keep that in mind. It's going to be an interesting year to come, but we've got plenty of time. We don't have to rush. Right now we're focused on until we get to June, see what happens by then. Um, see what kind of move we get. Do we get a bigger move down? Do we get a bigger move up? Well, stay tuned because it's going to come. Anyway, all right, that's it for the video. Hope you enjoyed it, and on to the next.